Hi, I'm Jim Brandt with Best Practical. You might be familiar with Request Tracker and how it uses tickets to track all kinds of different tasks from help desk requests to project management to software development. What you might not know is every Request Tracker instance comes with full asset tracking functionality included. So today in this video, we're going to go through some of the asset tracking features just to give you an idea what they look like. So on the screen right now, I have a dashboard set up, uh, and it may look like a familiar dashboard if you use RT. And in fact, if I go in, I can show you some other dashboards like a typical ticket tracking dashboard. Uh, and this might be uh, more familiar if you don't use asset tracking, uh, if you have an RT. But you can see what I've done is I've created an asset dashboard and set that as my homepage, just to show you all the different things that you can do with assets. In this case, we have a search uh, as the first section, the first portlet on this page. And what it's tracking is just all of the different assets we have in our system, and it's ordered by the next maintenance date. So maybe that's something that you wanna track and just keep track of as you go along. So let's take a look at one of these assets. So again, if you're familiar with tickets in RT, this will look very familiar. Uh, it tracks all the metadata associated with assets. So if you look up in the corner here, you can see we have a catalog. And if you're familiar with tickets, uh, tickets use queues as the main sort of group of things that you wrap together for different topics. So for assets, we call those catalogs. And you can have multiple catalogs in your RT, just like you can have multiple queues. So if you have all sorts of different types of assets that you want to track, you can do that with different catalogs. Uh, a name and a description, you can set those to whatever you want, whatever makes sense for your use case. And you can see there's a status. And again, if you're used to tickets in RT, this is the same idea with tickets. You have a, a different statuses that you can set that can track sort of the life cycle of your assets as you know they come in and they're new and then all the way through uh, wh whatever they uh, go through in their, their typical life. And just like with tickets, you can customize those life cycles. So if we go in, I'm logged in as a root user, so I can see all of the configuration. So if I go into life cycles, you can see that most of the life cycles in this RT are ticket-based life cycles. But if you look at this top one, you can see it is an asset life cycle. So just like tickets, you can create multiple life cycles for assets, and then you can customize those to have whatever statuses you need, uh, and then set those up to actually uh, manage the transitions between those statuses as well. So whatever your use case is, you can create uh, custom life cycles. And again, you can have multiple different catalogs. So the different catalogs can use different life cycles. Let's go back to our asset and uh, there's people on assets. So again, similar to tickets, different roles. Uh, in this case, we give you three default roles, an owner uh, held by, which might be the person in the case of, in this case, it's a laptop. Maybe it's the person that actually has it. And then a contact that might be a different person. If maybe there's someone who does maintenance, who's different from the person who actually has the laptop day to day. Uh, again, these are just roles on the asset. You can use them however you want, and you can also use custom roles, which is just like tickets. So if you have addi additional roles that you want to track, you can add those and, and track those in the people section as well. There's a few dates that we give you by default, which are the created and last updated. And then you can add custom fields, which can be date custom fields. So in this example, these last three are actually date custom fields that I've added uh, just for things that I might want to track uh, related to the different assets we have. So the issue date might be the date that uh, we actually gave this laptop to the person. So maybe we did it uh, this week. We can set that. And then we want to keep track of how long do we have support on this particular asset. And maybe we get a couple of years of support. So we can set that and then I can save. And then maybe we want to track uh, maintenance as we saw on the dashboard that we have. Uh, so as you can see, uh, full inline edit. So I can just click on any of these and just change them uh, as I go along. Uh, on to links, we'll talk about links in just a second. Uh, the last two sections are also custom fields. And this is really one of the key areas where you're gonna store most of your information on assets is in custom fields. So just like tickets, you can set whatever custom fields you want, as many as you need, and then you can name these sections using the custom field groupings feature in RT so that you can sort of section them off into areas that make sense uh, for your users. Uh, just like all the features of custom fields, uh, you can set rules on them. You can say this one, maybe our internal tracking number uh, requires like a letter and five numbers or some format. You can put all those rules on your custom fields to make sure that the, the data is always in the right format. You can do things like serial number. Uh, you can also do things uh, for asset tracking, again, where it's assets like laptops and printers and things like that, where you can get 
pre-printed uh, UPC on stickers and you can just put those on the assets. And then if you have one of those scanners, you can scan it. And all you do is click into the field, scan, and then the number uh, from the UPC will come right up. So you can do that as well and then track that right on your assets. So a typical workflow, you can see we have actions up here. And one of the actions you might want to do, several of these are just to change status. So you might just move uh, something from a new status to in use or, or whatever the different transitions are. But uh, another common thing you can do is create a linked ticket. And what you can do is using this, you can have work on your assets and then they're tracked as tickets, which might be a task for somebody to go do something. So uh, I can pick the queue that I want the new ticket to be created in, and then I can pick which roles should be set as the requester on the ticket that we're going to create. So maybe I'll uh, go ahead and leave that as the held by. And then we end up on the ticket create page. So it defaults to the name of the asset, but maybe I can do something like something more descriptive. Uh, say we need a new power supply, and then we'll just copy that into the body here. And then what you'll see is in this section, we have this assets box now shows up because when we went to this page, it's sent along the asset that we started. So when I create this ticket, you're going to see that asset shows up now and it's linked. So both in the link section down here and we have this extra portlet now that shows up on your ticket pages. So you have all the information about that particular asset. And there's even more. If I expand this, it's uh, uh, minimized by default. But if we go in and take a look at it, you can see there's additional information and this is all configurable. You can set this to be whatever information you want. And I've, this is all the core information, but then I put a custom field on here as well. So maybe when I'm ordering things like a power supply, I need to know the serial number. So I get the right, you know, make and model and, and the appropriate things. So whatever you want uh, for that particular asset, you can have uh, show up right there in that box. Now we're on a ticket. This is just a typical workflow for a ticket. So I'm going to go ahead and resolve this and say, We gave them the power supply. This will go to resolved. And now if I go back to the actual asset, what we'll see is that's now linked. So what you'll end up with over time is you'll have a full history on the asset of all the work that's been done against it. So now you know everything about that particular asset, uh, any kind of maintenance that's been done on it, really whatever it is that you want to track uh, via tickets will all be linked on there. So you basically have a full history. There's also a regular history just like on tickets. So everything that's done on the asset is tracked at the bottom. So you have a full audit of everything that happens uh, as, as the asset goes through various changes uh, on the metadata, as well as things like the linking and tickets that get linked. So that's the basics of uh, assets. You can create assets right from the menu here. Again, similar to uh, creating a ticket, you just fill out the information. There's other areas that you can get assets to show up in RT as well. So you can see uh, on this uh, homepage that I've created, we have find an asset. So you can just use that to just quickly find uh, and go to a particular asset. So if you're on the support side of things, that might be convenient if you're looking for something uh, that you want to quickly jump to. Um, for regular users, you can put the assets that you are set as the held by. So, and those will show up in my assets. So that might be something if you're somebody who, you know, if you want to have a quick link so that you can go open a ticket, if you ever need, uh, you know, something done for your computer, you can put that my assets portlet on your homepage or on some, you know, one of your dashboards. As you can see here, this is a regular search similar to a ticket search, and you can also do charts. So let's take a quick look at where you can do that. So up in the search section, again, you might be familiar with tickets, and there's also an asset search. So if we go to the assets and new search, we see there's an asset query builder. So again, very similar to tickets, I can go in and pick from the catalogs that I have. Once I add that catalog, all of my custom fields will show up. So I could go in and say, show me all of the uh, assets that we have in the IT department assets. And I can say, show me the ones that are in use. And then I can pick something like maybe brand and say where the brand is. And then I can pick any of these, Apple. And again, you do a search and you can see all of the assets that match those particular criteria. So as you can see in that search, you can search on any of the custom fields that you add. So whatever custom fields you put on there to track your assets, you can then come into the search interface and use those to just look for the particular assets that you want to see on any given search. So really anything that you want to search against all the assets that you've created, you can do here. So similar to tickets, 
At the bottom, you can control on the search results, the ordering of uh, the results based on any of the fields there, and you can also control the columns that show up. And any of the uh, metadata that you add, including custom fields, are available uh, in these. So if I wanted to see, for example, that brand, I can just do a quick search, get brand, add that to the search results, and now um, brand is right there. So we can see that right in the search results. So anything that you put on your assets, you can set your searches up so that you can see all of the details of those here. And again, just like tickets, you can click over to the chart section, and this is where you can pick all of the different uh, things that you might want to chart your things on, including custom fields. So again, if we just leave brand there, um, we can update and we'll have, again, we've made our search so that it's just Apple. So all we're seeing is that, but uh, you can do uh, your charts on any of the uh, information that you have on your assets. So back to our uh, dashboard that we have, our asset dashboard. Again, any of those, if you save those, you can then add them to a dashboard so that they just come up. Uh, so that if you have some searches that um, are persistent and you wanna keep them, uh, again, similar functionality to tickets. There's also some things you can do on the user summary page, we call. So this is just the page with all the information about a particular user. Down at the bottom here, you'll see that there is a portlet that you can add here as well. So again, if you're the support person and maybe uh, people call in with requests, you might come here and see like all the tickets they have open. You can add this portlet so that you can quickly find all of the uh, you know, their laptops, maybe, you know, any other things that they have signed out to them uh, so that if you need to do maintenance on that, it's really easy to, to quickly find that. And you can just go and you know that that's the one that's assigned to this particular user. So there is also a way to expose assets to self-service users. So I'll open another browser here. If you have uh, users using self-service in your organization, and I'm just gonna log in as a self-service user. With appropriate rights, you can allow them to see their assets here as well. And again, this is that same portlet that we saw on the user summary page, and now we see it here in self-service. Uh, like uh, tickets, Everything about catalogs and assets is controlled by rights. So uh, at first, you're not going to see this. You have to go in and grant rights to allow people to uh, see their assets here. And then they can go in and similar functionality. Uh, they can open a ticket and you know it'll be linked to their asset that's assigned to them. So this is an easy way for people to open tickets if they need uh, some sort of assistance with the, um, the, their laptop or whatever the assets are that they have been assigned. So if we go back to our main page here, uh, there's a few other things that you can do with assets. Mostly what I've talked about so far is the typical case, which again, with the IT support department and keeping track of printers and laptops and desktops and, and things like that. Um, what we found is uh, users actually have been using it really, though, for anything that you might want to keep track of, anything that you might have an inventory of. So um, one uh, set of assets that we've actually been using is cloud assets. So if you think about all of the different, if you have any kind of infrastructure in the cloud, um, you might uh, have you know, EC2 instances, RDS, things like that. Those are assets as well. And you can take metadata off of those instances and pull those in and then track those as assets. So you can keep track of various different things uh, that you might want to do, including things like uh, you know, ch tracking maintenance. So we've actually done a uh, connection between our assets and there's a change management extension for RT. And you can link those together so that you can track all of your maintenance on your assets that are in the cloud. So this is on our blog and you can go check out and see how we've used this to track some of our things in AWS. And you can see some of the different dashboards that we've set up here that track not only the uh, EC2 instance and actual assets, but reservations as well. And you can link between assets. So what we've done is it actually allows us to link our reservations to the assets that they are associated with. Now, if you already are tracking assets in something like a spreadsheet, uh, which is very common, uh, we have an extension to help you get jump started with assets. So you can export, if you're using Excel, you can export that as a CSV file. You can use this extension and you can pull all of that data into your uh, into a new catalog and get started right away and then you don't lose anything. And what you do is you can map your columns that you maybe already have in your spreadsheet to custom fields that you create in that catalog so then all of your data can get pulled uh, into RT. So if you're just getting started, uh, we also have some documentation, including a tutorial that you can go through, and it will walk you through even more information than we've included here in this video.
So if you're new to assets, we hope this gets you started and you can start using assets today.